So whilst it this is uh, the bearings inside the stub axle assembly are good, the universal joint, which is be which is in the swivel pin housing on the half shaft, is totally seized. It's not it's not turned. So I've got to strip this down. Yeah, got to strip this down. And this is about the same as the other side, given that there is a jacking, jacking point that goes on here, which isn't on the other side. That's about the only difference. I want to take the brake anchor plate off anyway. And that's stripped off, given that it has got the wheel cylinder on the bottom still. I took the one off here. So, where to start? Well, I've got to take the hub cap off first. If I was just changing this seal at the back, the swivel seal, I could take it off the vehicle like this and just take the swivel seal off from the back. So I wouldn't need to disassemble it. But as the UJ is seized in there, I've got to order because this is good, but the UJ is, is not so good. Got a little broken brake pipe here. So, you know, we've got to refurb this whole thing. I might as well get on with it then. So first things first, actually, is to take, take off the little hub cap. So actually, I was just thinking while I was doing this is that to rebuild the whole thing, we just watch the video in reverse rather than rebuild it. I thought, you know, because I've always going to take ages, each of these pieces, each of these parts has got to be cleaned. So to do the whole video would be about three or four hours long. I'm not going to do that. So to rebuild it, just watch the video backwards. Right, in amongst all that grease there's a split pin and uh, I'm going to take that off. So next is the split pin which I've already loosened. I'm only going to have to hold it steady. or crown nut. I need an adjustable for that. Now if this rotates round I'll have to use the studs put a sort of lever bar in between the studs so that it won't turn but it might be it might not be seized up or anything so we'll get on to that. to undo these are uh, 5 16 Whitworth yeah these 5 16 Whitworth member driving member six off driving member with little spring washers do, 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 do. now there's a gasket so if you can do this it's a good idea to have a spare gasket you could make your own gaskets it's a bit of an awkward shape to make your own gaskets but it's not unheard of or just um, get a bear mark gasket or something <laughs> gonna have to edit that bit out anyway have to edit that bit out okay so what's happening is that's turning so it's uh, just put something in the wheel stud there the other hand 
Oops, hang on. Yeah. Now you will really want to watch me remove all six of the driving member bolts. socket wouldn't fit on here by the way because they're over painted so the time saved using a socket you would you would waste having to remove the, the extra paint or you could hammer your socket on there if you didn't really care about it but eventually you'd clog your socket up and have to clean it so yeah it swings and roundabouts you save money on doing it yes but you waste time having to clean the bolt heads of the extra paint here particularly some of the military ones get several layers of paint here. This one's only got two layers of paint, I think, silver and black. Anyway, we'll fast forward this because it's going to be pretty boring on doing all, all six. They just come out like that. So this is a driving member. Like I say, there's a gasket there. And the way that I remove this there's several different ways and this isn't hard and fast i've got one of these crankshaft splitters and i'll just set this up and then come back so the jaws just go behind that part of the driving member and then you just tighten it up don't need to tighten it shouldn't need to swing on it or anything because it should just be the gasket that's holding it but this gasket's been on for ages so it might be a little bit tight should hear it click off quite quickly it's just taking up a little bit of slack at the moment well it's coming but i don't see the j it's moving up the threads if you look at the uh it's coming up the thread made a noise then didn't it? I heard the gasket slip, slip then. Just have a look through the viewfinder to see where we are. See the gap opening up there. Right, that should be turnable by hand. There we go. getting a lot of glare here and um, we can dis disassemble it now which I'm sure you don't really want to watch me do uh, so I'll do it two-handed for speed I think so that was the splitter tool taking it off <laughs> Just working its way up the threads now the driving member there it is with the gasket all torn up they can be a bit hard to get off I think well not that wasn't very hard was it they're not that hard to get off now we've got to tap off the lock washer on the hub nut it's, oh, we've got to turn it round on the half shaft to get to the there's there's the lock washer. I'm just looking to see how many times it's been been off before. Anyway, it doesn't really matter as long as it's in good nick. Here we go. Probably hasn't. No, I can't tell. I'm not. Okay, for the sharp-eyed among you that didn't would have noticed that this washer and the the uh, special gasket washer in the end of the driving hub they was sort of stuck together part of pulling it out pushed them together anyway tools for the locked lock tab sacrificial screwdriver center punch larger screwdriver and a hammer now i also like to use a drift and i'm going to have to go find my drift yes so i've got a drift and I like this drift because it's got a slightly deflected angle which lets you get into a lock tab quite quickly. It doesn't always fit in the space you've got but 
if it fits in the space, let's use it. So there's the lock tab washer. I've just drifted that down. It exposes the hub nut. For undoing the hub nut, I've got this Brit part socket, 52 millimeter, and I use some Stilson plumber's wrench. Might need a lever bar on that as well. Put the Stilson's round with it markers. And this is perfectly what it did the last one. And the last one was really stiff. Might need a blowtorch to give it a bit of persuasion. Don't they don't come out? Well, the last one didn't come out very easily, so maybe they do come out. Maybe I'll just edit all that crap out because they don't sound very. So it's got evidence it's been um, loosened with a punch before. I didn't do that. It came up, came undone pretty easy with a brick part thing. Might actually get a new one of these. So the two hub nuts, they're actually identical part numbers. All we've got in there now is the lock, the lock washer to remove. That one came out quite easily. Let's have a look at it. That, that key, there's a key for a key slot down the stub axle. Been turned round before, I think. So it's been on and off a couple of times. All right, let's have a look at the uh, the second of the hub nuts. That one looks quite easy as well. It's not very tight. I didn't have a look at the end float. <laughs> no point in having a look at the end float now. Now the UJ is seized up anyway. It's got to be reset later. Uh, I'm actually going to mark my hub nuts, both the way they went in and which one went where, so that I can, if I can get it apart, get it back together, get it back together. All right, just one more washer to come out on this video. I'm going to have to use a screwdriver for that. Oh, well, well something's been... What's going on here? It seems to be seized to the top of the bearing. Let's just take it all off and see what happens. That's the washer I was looking for. It's not seized to the top of the bearing. There's plenty of oil in there. Alright, let me mark up my hub nuts. That's don't have to do that. I just do that because I like to put things back together exactly the way they came out. So I've cleared away my hub nuts and my lock washers and the other washers. So it's now time to remove the front hub assembly, which is the bit with the wheel nut studs. So it should just come off, shouldn't need to pull it. Let's have a look. There's a couple of bearings. Yes, yeah, so the front hub assembly doesn't need to be pulled. There's a couple of sets of taper bearings little bit of agitation, probably two-handed, and you can just withdraw that. So, I'm just going to leave this, and I'll take the front hub assembly away from the brake anchor plate, because the object of stripping this down is to really get to that UJ, or that journal, which is on the half shaft inside the swivel pin housing. So, next really will be take the brake anchor plate off. So I'll put the front hub assembly in a safe place, probably with the brake drum for this side. Nice SKF bearings, they're in really good nick. 
so I'll just give him a clean and some paraffin. They're made in England as well. Yeah, so like I say, I want to get the brake anchor plate off next and sharp-eyed among you will notice that I've just taken off this wheel cylinder. Now, the other one was a girling and this is doesn't look like a girling and the other one was sort of aluminium body and this has got cast body, metal body. So the studs came out, had to remove a rather awkward lead nipple before it would come through the aperture in the brake anchor plate. Other than that, it's a straightforward little thing. It was just a little side little side thing. So with removing the brake anchor plate we've got some more lock washers. So like I say with the lock washers we want a screwdriver and a, and a nice drift. This drift has got a nice little form on the front. Now each one of these locks is a sort of mini lock and another mini lock. They're sort of the lock is broken up on an angle. So it's nice to see some brake dust crud mixed in with the oil there. So they were working once. So like I say, the lock washers on the brake anchor plate are slightly different. I've got a slightly different, this is part of an old um, hand plane, which I didn't mutilate the hand plane, I just had this old blade from a box of tools or something. You could, anyway, it's extremely useful because of the shape of it and the sharpness of it. It needs a bit of a sharp and it's been abused. But it should make light work of these little lock tabs. So I've bent back all the lock tab washers on this. These are 5 16 Whitworth. So you might just need an extension on your socket or what have you. And uh, I'd be happy to get this cleaned up because of this mastic stuff that's been all over this old Land Rover. So let's have a look then, these 5 16 Whitworths. They're just going to come undone now, hopefully. And this would be a good time for a ratchet spanner. Or a socket. I'm trying to remove one to have a look at it. It's not going according to plan, really. Okay, so they're just little ones like that. It's in good nick, isn't it? That's because it screws and it's in the swivel pin housing, which should be full of oil, although I have drained it. I hope I've drained it. It certainly smells a bit oily down there. Got some oil leaking, so I thought I drained it, but you see the UJ which goes through the housing there seems to be seized, which makes me think there wasn't any oil in it because the swivel sills were leaking, it would have leaked out all its oil over time and uh, dried out. These seem to be. I did put some oil in it, and let it stand for a while, so it might be the oil that I put in it. Let's, let's undo the bolts. So all of the lock tabs and bolts are out on the brake anchor plate. So a couple of little taps with a soft-faced mallet should release it. That literally was a couple of taps, so that's good. So looking forward to getting this cleaned that I can hardly contain myself. So next will be the stub axle assembly. So next off will be the stub axle assembly and the flange plate ends with a gasket underneath all this mastic. Let's see if I can't get it off with this wire brush. Oh, 
faulty in it. Obviously if I'd cleaned it first, which was very awkward to break anchor plate on. So there's there's the end. Now what I'm going to do is just put a hub nut on and pull it off. So this is the first of me hub nuts, the one this is a bit tatty, someone's hit it with a punch. So I don't mind using this. This is going to give my splitter tool something to grip on. I just screw it on so it's fully threaded on. Don't need to go on any further than that. So the splitter tool is behind the hub nut and it should pull it off here. I've got the 17mm. Turn, turn the screw. Yeah, come straight away. Probably wouldn't have even needed to pull it on this. But they can be stubborn. So at this point the half shaft should be withdrawn, should withdraw, which it does. A little bit of a messy withdrawal. We can have a quick on the surface inspections. It's not too bad. There is some surface rust. It's minimal. It's a hardy spicer. UJ or journal. And the uh, Circlips look like proper ones, not the ones with little lugs that are easy to remove with circlip pliers. Anyway, so I'll put that in a safe place and continue on to split the swivel pin housing from the bearing housing because there's nothing wrong with the UJ. I thought the UJ had seized, but it isn't, so it must be the swivel that's stuck in there. So next I'm going to remove this steering arm. So there's several locks. They're actually buried under all this mastic still. I don't know whether they're the sort of half locks or full locks. They look like half locks. And I'll try and tidy it up with a wire brush. Probably use two hands. There they are. They're little half lockers. There's a gap in between. So there's one there and one there. I'll use this tool and then this drift tool. So all my lock washers here on the steering relay arm or the steering pinion arm or something. The steering arm, you know. Anyway, all the lock tabs are down. So this is 7 16 British Standard Fine. It might be 3 8 Whitworth. But it looks pretty standard fine to me. It's the same thing anyway. Spanner sizes. So we're gonna have to undo those. A couple of studs came out as well. A couple of nuts came off leaving the studs in place. Now from my experience it's a few taps with a rubber hammer really, but you never know how sticky these things are gonna be. Oh, it's started to come already that one. He says famous last words there. So I'm just gonna just gonna tap this off, hold it steady with the other hand. Well, I don't know whether it's superstition, but I actually removed this oil drain plug uh, in order while I was whacking this off, sort of thing, you know. And uh, while I was beating this thing off. carry on with that just you get the idea of just whacking that off sort of thing. Yeah, I think it was inevitable that was going to be a bit stiff because the swivel had sealed in there, uh, yeah seized in there. Anyway so this has come out now if you're going to do this of course it's a good idea to have a spare o-ring and this one is pretty minced. It's lots of so I've got a spare o-ring luckily, new o-ring should I say rather than a spare one. 
could have a spare one, but I'll just put a new one on there. I'm going to take this away for a clean up. A clean up and a spray. I don't see any shims. The shims are on the other side. I thought it might be a 10 pal shim on this, but maybe not anyway. So it's going to need a new O-ring and a clean up. So we'll put that safe. We can turn it around now. Do the other side and then remove the swivel seal retaining plate, or I could take the swivel seal retaining plate off now. I don't know whether it makes any difference. Well, let's, we've got to knock off another load of half lock tabs. So we'll do that next. So I've knocked back on my lock tab on these. One, two, four off bolts, and they're seven sixteenths British standard, fine stainless size or socket size. I'm just going to heat these up with a blowtorch first because I think they're looking pretty well stuck to the studs. It'll probably take the studs out as well, but I'd rather it didn't. So a blowtorch might help me out there. So indeed, the nuts stayed on and the studs came out of this part. This one is the one with shims in it. It's the one with the spring. Right, now the swivel started to wake up. So I think probably it's seized up at the bearing here. It's the one with the spring and the, the metal cone sort of thing. It's not a rake and it's too early for a rake and, and I don't think it will have been upgraded. Anyway, it's a two-hand job, obviously. Let's have a look then. Um, I shouldn't say that. Anyway, so after removing the spring from, from here, the swivel is extremely loose. But we've got to take the retaining plate off and the seal out before we can separate these. Here are the shims. They just need a clean. They're all stuck together. can check that for wear later it's probably all right just a little bit of surface really surface rust so next the 7 16 to take the retaining plate off for the swivel oil seal so including the oil drain plug there were seven uh, bolts for this and there's really just six holes for the retaining plate of the seal here is the seal. Now I've knocked this out with a cold chisel. So the old seal there, which should lift over this. There it is. That's the old seal, which was leaking, but not as badly as the other one. So now provided the bearings aren't sticking out from the edge of the swivel, the swivel should just lift out. There. I know I stuffed this one full of newspaper because there was some residual oil in there. That can go away for a quick clean up. It's got minimal pitting, a little bit of pitting around a bit of the union, but that's not important there. Well, that's not too bad, really. That that bearing. There's no reason for the swivel to be sealed, seized up. It must have been seized up due to this, and this one don't seem too bad either. Well, it's one of those mysteries. Yeah, it goes in that one like that. Well, we'll give it a good clean. We'll give it a good clean up. So, you need to prepare the seal face for a new seal and really give this a, a, a damn good clean really the outside remove the drain plug and then we'll give it give it a clean and a lick of paint you know i'll spray it up spray it with some black chassis paint or something we'll just check it you know for integrity and stuff 
well, you know, now everything is stripped down. It's really, it's time to start cleaning and painting. And there's, that's, aside from moving the filler plug, there's nothing, there's nothing left to take off this. So that's stripped down as you want to get it, really. That's the swivel pin housing off and the bearings over there for a clean or replace. So, I'm giving this a paraffin bath in a bucket of paraffin and a scouring pad. It's now going to go off for a degrease. So if we have a look, it says R, and there's an arrow. Now this is the drain for the oil in, in the pinion housing, which I'm holding. This is the filler, and there's the drain. So we know that it goes that way up, okay, because you wouldn't have the drain at the top. And on the inside, after the paraffin bath, this uh, red paint, I'm pretty sure that's from the factory. And then there's a kind of black finish on the inside. I think that's factory. So anyway, it's going to go off for a degrease now and then a wire wheel. So I can get some paint on the outside of it because it's heavily pitted. It's not to worry though, it's just surface. Got to remove the old gasket or joint washer. Be quite a gentle thing to take off actually. Anyway, so let's uh, give that a degrease. So here's the pinion housing after a, a wash and a degrease. So there's some more red paint in there with some black finish, but I'm going to wire wheel this and give it a spray job. These are, these are safe out of rain here. And we'll just get round to cleaning cleaning it as we go. Here's the bearing housing, the original finish inside, and the machining marks. The bearing's good. There's, there is some pitting, but it, I don't think it's particularly extreme. I've sort of sandpapered the rust off of 100 grit. The bearing's all right, I think I said that. See what it's like after a spray up. This is a bit pitted, which is a bit sad because the actual bearing's really good. And here's some writing. <laughs> 